Ah! Let's just see what happens. No, no, video, go. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making another one of my Lego Research Institute models. You might remember last time we made the paleontologist with her T-Rex and she is super awesome, except I've lost her bone. <laughs> so today we're going to make the astronomer and because it's got the star chart it seemed like a really good opportunity to talk about a lady called Annie Jump Cannon. Is this gonna work? I hope so. You don't look familiar. No, your chemistry. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, look! The star chart, it's got all of them on it. Okay, so where are you? Astronomer. The first thing we have to do, obviously, is make our little Annie jump cannon. Oh, she's got two faces. So she's got one if she's feeling a little bit excited and another one if she's feeling a little bit of a smart ass, apparently. Popping her head on, and now I need to put on her body. She's got herself some smart blue trousers. Oh, look at her. Isn't she smart? Wonderful, let's pop her just there. Oh no, her hair's come off. Sorry! So Annie Jump Cannon was born on the 11th of December in 1863 and was the eldest of three daughters to Wilson Cannon, who was state senator and a shipbuilder. But it was her mother who encouraged her to get involved in sciences and pushed her academically towards chemistry, um, mathematics, biology. And it was Annie Jump Cannon who took an interest in astronomy. And her mother suggested she went for a place at Wellesley College in Massachusetts, which was one of the top academic schools for women in the US at the time. We now need to make our patchwork floor. And I guess this should be just quite easy, really. I'm just going square and a white one. Oh, do I just do the whole thing? White and a gray. And I blooming love Lego. And a white one and a gray one. Ouch. She listened to her mother's advice and in 1880 went to Wellesley College and studied under a Miss Frances Whiting who got Annie really interested in um, spect spectros spect who really got her interested in spectroscopy. Look at this cheeky little blue just finding its way into my greys and my whites. Oh no, I'm really not doing this very neatly. That's fine. <gasps> whites and greys. Oh no, done it wrong again. And now I need a grey line. I have some pieces left over. Why do I have pieces left over? They're spares. Yeah? Sure. Done! Spectroscopy is um, very simply the study of light and the way it is emitted, absorbed or scattered by materials. And because of this, it's a measure of light. It's often used as a way to classify stars and Annie Jump Cannon happened to be pretty good at it. Annie Jump Cannon has graduated, so we can move on to our next bit of kit, which looks like it might be the beginning of our telescope. So you're going there. I need another two by one, two by one, one by two. <laughs> Lego speak. The beginning of what possibly could be the, oh, maybe it's the blackboard. <gasps> Is it the blackboard? No. <laughs> After graduating in 1892, Annie Jump Cannon traveled to Europe with her Blair Box camera, which at the time was considered innovative and portable because it folded down to the size of a suitcase, which is hilarious when you just consider these. But she was there to photograph the solar eclipse. However, not soon afterwards, she was stricken with scarlet fever, which was devastating because it left her nearly deaf. And this loss of hearing made it very difficult for her to socialize. As a result, she immersed herself in her work, but she never married or had children, which is very sad. So we'll pop you there, Annie. Sorry, her hair just came off. We're going on to our star chart. First, we are going with our little corner sofa there. Lovely jubbly. And then finally, I need to just pop this one on the back, which has like a little hinge. Oh, maybe that goes there. Yes, it does. Let's clip it on. Broke it. Oops. It doesn't like that. Ah, there we go. Star chart. Yeah. Nailed it! In 1896, Cannon was invited to become a member of Pickering's Women, and they were a group of women hired by Edward C. Pickering, who was the Harvard Observatory Director, to complete the Henry Draper Catalogue, an epic astronomical star catalogue. And the first thing she discovered was the SS Cygni, a dwarf nova that repeats its outburst every 60 days. I think we're about to make the telescope, and then we're nearly done. <gasps> what do we need? I need a brown pole, another stand. Did I just go on top? No, I messed it up. I messed it up. What have I done? Ah, one of them with a pole in the middle. 
Done. That's it. That was easy. Well, well, there was no need to struggle. So not long after she began working on the Draper catalogue, an argument arose as to how the women should go about classifying the stars. And one lady, Antonia Mori, who was Draper's niece, wanted to use this really complicated classification system. And then another woman, Wilhelmina Fleming, who was overseeing the whole project for Draper, was much more um, keen on using a really simple system. Annie, however, came up with a compromise. She met them in the middle and started by mapping the brightest Southern Hemisphere stars. And she did this by dividing them into their spectral classes, and O being the hottest and M being the coolest. In the middle, you've got O, B, a, F, G, K, M, and she remembered these by the words, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. <laughs> right, so I don't think we want a little plunger. I don't think that's quite right. So we need to create something to go on top. Woo, easy peasy, and you? Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. That, ladies and gentlemen, is so the beginning of our telescope. It's gonna go on the blue dot, isn't it? Let's put you there now. Yay! At the moment it looks like a bird bath. So between the years of 1912 and 1915, Annie Jump Cannon and her co-workers would classify around 5,000 spectra a month, okay? And she, little Annie here, classified more stars than any female or male in her lifetime with a total of approximately 50,000 stars. She classified 50,000 stars, like what? We've got the last thing to do, so we are now making the telescope. So we need our thing that looks like a little grey flower pot. We have you. Oh, that doesn't feel very secure. What's that bit? I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Sorry. We've made ourselves a little telescope. Brilliant! Oh, look at her! Annie Jump Cannon's career in astronomy lasted more than 40 years, and during her time as an astronomer, she really helped women gain respect and acceptance in her field. There's even the Annie Cannon Prize, which is awarded to female astronomers for outstanding contribution to their field. So here we go, she is done. Look, let's bring them all round. It's gonna take the ray gun out of Mary Anning's hand because technically not supposed to be a ray gun in a scene about paleontology. So that can be a bone instead. So now we have Mary Anning, the paleontologist and Annie Jump Cannon, my astronomer. Next one is going to be the chemist. So I hope you look forward to that video in the coming weeks and I'll see you all very soon. Bye! Annie, you're a legend.